hi guys and welcome back to my channel so today is going to be a, diff a bit of a different it's going to be a sit down it's going to be like a little story time but not story time kind of vibe. so i'm going to tell you guys my testimony and how i came to jesus and like completely give my life to christ so yeah i'm going to tell you a bit about my testimony and then I'm going to just talk to you and give you a bit of encouragement when I've done. Okay, so I'll give you a backstory. So with me, I have always known Jesus. Like, have I? No, I have not. With me, I've always believed there was a God. I've always believed, you know, there's someone, there's a higher power, there's a God that looks out for us and, you know, he protects us. But I grew up in like a Catholic household. And when I say a Catholic household, um, I feel like my family just turned Catholic because those were the schools that was deemed like the best schools. So they wanted us to go to the Catholic schools. So they literally turned Catholics and then we had to do like our confessions and everything. So that's where the, like, I don't think they genuinely thought, like looked into Catholicism and anything and everything. Not saying that there's anything wrong before you start, start slaughtering me. But I don't, my family personally, I don't think there was a lot of thought behind them choosing Catholicism, Catholicism, is it Catholicism? But choosing to be a Catholic, which is fine. So yeah, I grew up in a Catholic household and I would go to church, I went to a church school, Church of England school, I went to a Catholic high school and you know, we'd go to church every other Sunday, you know, and we thought we was good people, we're going to heaven. Um, it wasn't till like, and I was happy with that. I went to a, but for me, like I just, envision church to be boring like from that like i just thought like church is dry like so boring like mass used to be like i remember in high school like when we'd break up for every like christmas holiday easter holidays we'd have like a three hour mass and i remember like literally every single time just saying to my mum, i can't actually go like i'm sick or it was a thing like it, it doesn't matter i don't need to go to school say so it's only mass kind of vibes right so i grew up in like a catholic household but i never connected so so yeah as i said i was brought up in a catholic household and it was when i went to university so i remember one night i was like i actually want to know who god was i was so not clued up about who god even was guys like i literally didn't even know there's different versions to the bible like we had bibles around the house but every time i try and read them it was like art thou shall not thou and i was like i genuinely can't deal english literally literature is not my thing i can't deal with shakespeare like i just don't i'd rather not all right and i remember one night in my bedroom at home i literally found this song my god is awesome and i played it all night and i was praying stayed awake all night and my mum was like Aaliyah, what's going on like are you turning into a bible basher that's what she said to me and i was just like no like i just want to know god but i literally didn't know how I didn't know how and I remember I was going to uni and I prayed and I was like God I, I really want to know you but I can't understand the Bible I don't understand a word the Bible is saying to me and you know like I, I, please just make a way for me to know you and I remember I went to university and I stole my mum's Bible I've still got that Bible to today that's mine now because and I just took my mum's Bible but I took it because my mum told me like when a Bible's in your room like no ghosts or anything can come aka demons but we we thought that was ghosts so i took that to my room in my room in university i'm so sorry just isabel's there just playing so don't mind her so when i was in university i opened this bible and it was the uh new international version i understood every word and i was like that is literally my first answered prayer and I remember reading my Bible, I was so interested. And I was, obviously I went to university in London. So um, I needed a job, sis needed a job to survive. You know me, I love my luxury things. So sis needed a job to survive. See, no, please go play. Wow, my kid just pushed me, Holy Spirit. Yeah, sis needed a job to survive. And then I went on to, I think it's Matthew, 633 don't quote me but it's in it's in uh chapter six i just don't know what verse 
and the verse was do not worry about anything you know look how god looks after the trees it's not the tree look how god looks after the flowers yeah. and they're here today and gone tomorrow is your life not more valuable of course it's going to look after you kind of vibe and i was like guy baby baby go and sit down please go yeah. sit down thank you i love you i love you so much Can I have a kiss I love you. Go sit down and play nicely then, okay? I love you, baby. You're such a good girl. I love her. Yeah, so it was that scripture. And I was like, God is real. And then I went out. I went out to West... No, I went out to Hammersmith. I went out to Hammersmith's um, High Street with one of my friends. And this woman came over to us and she started evangelizing to me. She was like, you know, just Jesus loves you. Take this. I've still got it. She gave me a leaflet and it had like a little prayer on the back. And she invited me to her church, but I just didn't go. Like, I was just so distracted by you know who. Lucy. Um, that I didn't go to church. So that was like my first year of uni, right? And then... My friend passed away, Shanice, and I, that just put me off. So yeah, after Shanice's death, I was very much battling with my brain. Like, I was so upset with God. I was livid. I just couldn't comprehend how God would take the cleanest hearted person. Like, to me, guys, Shanice, like, we was friends from the age of seven. And for our whole lives, I, she never showed me nothing but love. And I have, like a lot of trauma from friendships and i have like a lot of trauma from people just bad mind weirdos do you know what i mean and she needs like genuinely i could never even say one bad thing about her like she was always in my corner so because i'm a bad b <laughs> because she's actually in heaven chilling now so i actually don't even need to get upset but i was so vexed i was so upset with god over shanice's death so anyway i didn't pray like i didn't talk to him i was so um, give god the silent treatment for a whole year like i'm so sad with jesus Mom. so then yes baby oh yeah you found your nan then so um yeah so sometime Mom. sometime Wow. In like 2017, I just prayed, like I was just praying to God and I was just asking him to heal my heart. You know, I was going for a breakup. I was still mourning Shanice. And I was like, God, like, this is not my life. Like, I'm, I, I have everything, but I'm not happy. Like, I have everything, but I feel so down and so depressed. Like, what is going on? Do you know what I mean? But to the outside world, everything looked gl glossy and great. Um... And then one of my friends invited me to a Bible study and me, there was three of us. So there was the friend that was saved, she was baptized. And then there was me and my other friend. So me and my other friend went to the friend that was saved Bible study. And I was so interested, loving every minute of it. There was telling me about demons and angels and about the silent war that got... I says, you yeah, what? All of this is going on. No wonder I'm being depressed because I'm fighting a battle naked. No wonder I've been depressed. I need to put on my armor kind of vibes. So from there, like that was the first seed planted. And then the way that God worked is me and the friend that was saved started working together in a corporate office. And she took me... But me and the friend that was saved started working together in the corporate office and then on her team was a leader in my church now. Look at Jesus Christ. So he was a leader and I don't think he was a leader then, I'm not too sure. But he was preaching a word. He was preaching in my church. And she was like, oh, my friend's preaching in church. Since like you've been coming Bible studies, why don't you come and watch him preach? And I was like, yeah, sure. So on the Sunday, we got up, we listened to gospel music. Hush nicely, hush nicely. We got up, we listened to gospel music. We went to church. There was praise and worship. I was like, oh, what is this place? It's lit. It was praise and worship. And then, guys, when that man started preaching, my good bro Carlito, big up yourself, because when he preached, I felt like I'd been punched in the face by the Holy Spirit. Okay, the whole it's not violent, but I felt like my heart had just been massaged and everything was okay. Everything that he preached was going on in my life. And I was like, 
sorry what? Sorry, sorry what? So then I made that decision then, I'm giving my life to God, like God is actually real, I'm giving my life to God, them then, with me, I act, like if I feel something, I'm going to act on it right there and then, so in my head, <laughs> I'd give my life to God, right, and then I remember in the church, like everyone just made me feel so welcome, like I always had this stigma of Christians in my head that they're very judgmental and they're just very like annoying you know just ju judgmental and not very nice even though they are of Christ like I just had that vision and they were so welcoming they was like hi how are you da -da -da -da. I remember I spoke to one of the girls in my church and we exchanged numbers and she was like oh are you gonna come next week I said I will be here yeah 11 a.m is where I'll be I'll be sitting in the seats I still to this day, I sit in the same state, and it was like three years ago. So yeah, that's how the scene was planned. And then the next week I went, my pastor was preaching. It weren't the boy anyway, it was my pastor this time. And when he finished, I just went up to him and I says, hello, my name's Eliane, I wanna get baptized. And he says, you wanna get baptized? I says, I want to get baptized. And he says, yeah, you can join the baptism classes, you know, and you can learn what baptism is about, you can get baptised. And then I think it was like a month later, after doing the baptism classes, oh. your girl gave you like, give her life to Jesus, I'll insert the kids. <laughs> and then, I didn't, I, as everyone in the church was very friendly, but I was very much no new friends kind of vibe. So it was like, oh, well, you can have my number, but I don't really wanna mingle like that. As I said, I had a lot of trauma in friendships, so I weren't trying to mingle with them. So I had, like, when I got baptised, the spiritual attacks just started. First, I would, like, when I got baptised, I was on fire. Like, I would go to prayer on a, th on a Tuesday, uh, Bible study on a Thursday, then church. And I was working full time and I was like, let's get it, let's get it. But then like three weeks after I was like, I'm actually exhausted. Like I'm not gonna go to church tonight. And I didn't have like them godly friends around me to encourage me, no sis, like you should come, like push through, just come kind of vibes. So then it, uh, so I got baptized the 16th of July, 2017. And my friend Tori's birthday is the, 18th of August so on the 18th of August one of my friends was like you know it's Tori's birthday let's get lit let's go out and I thought you know what even though I'm a Christian I'm still gonna go and I'm gonna evangelize for them everyone that's in the club I'm gonna tell them how great Jesus is do you know what I mean that's what I'm gonna do well the night before so it was his birthday was in August so when I got to the firstly Tori had a meal and Z's dad and Tori used to be very good friends. And um, so when it was Tori's birthday, he was at the mill, but obviously I didn't know he was gonna be at the mill. I'm sitting around the table, who walks in? <laughs> Z's dad and one of his friends. And I'm just dad. like, and because we, was, I don't, we wasn't speaking, dad. like I fell out with him. Dad. So he wasn't, dad. yeah. So he wasn't speaking, I'd fell out with him. And yeah, I'm gonna be careful of what I say because Z is sat right there. So he wasn't speaking and you know, he just met, like I didn't speak to him the whole meal, you know me, Mrs. Stubborn. Um, didn't speak to him the whole meal and then he made conversation and I ended up dropping him home. But nothing happened because I'm not no idiot. Even though I got pregnant a couple months later. But anyway, nothing happened. I just took him home and I went about my day, right? But what I didn't realise was Satan was actually planting seeds, right? And then so we went out to the club. And guys, when we went to the club, like, we had so much fun. Like, the club was lit. Like, it was so lit. And I was like... I'm actually going again next week. And because I didn't have that accountability, because I didn't have like godly friends, like don't get me wrong, I, I had spoken to Tyler, but I hadn't really opened up to her like that just yet. So because I didn't, you've disabled my phone. Why? You had this. So because I didn't have that godly accountability, like I could run wild. Do you know what I mean? I was actually running wild. So I just, spiraled out of control started seeing his dad again you know started going to the club like guys living in sin but you know what the dangerous thing is my sin 
felt so good like every time we got like I always say summer 2017 was the best summer of my life like because that's how fun my sin felt um, but that's just the devil like he's such a trickster like he's, I'm smiling when I say it but I, he's we're actually warring at this point can't stand him but God protect me because you know he's gonna try and you know attack me after I do this video but the Lord is my light and salvation so anyway I'm in sin I'm in sin I'm in sin I am in sin guys like the way i was acting from summer to like january 2000 and from summer to december 2017 sinful as eh, sinful as how literally sinful as how right so then 2000 and 17 December, I was like, you know what, this is enough with Z's dad, I don't want to do it anymore, it's it's just intense, don't like it, don't want to do it, it's the ghetto, and I kind of cut Aww. ties with him, and then fast forward 2018, I find out I'm pregnant, Aww. yeah, when I fell pregnant, it was an utter shock to me, because I never in a million years planned to ever have this boy's baby, I didn't, I just wanted to have a little, you just don't know how it, how it went, so I gotta be mindful because Z is right there. But I never planned to have a baby at 23 for one. And to be a single mom. So I did, your good sis did book some abortions, but God said nope. Every single I booked four different abortions. Every single one I booked. I didn't even show up. Like I felt so convicted by the Holy Spirit. I didn't go. Um and then I had to go back to church because when I got pregnant, I proper made the decision like the world has actually nothing for me. It's just damaging. And luckily, God gave me a baby and not HIV or not like a killer disease. Luckily, he gave me a blessing in my sin. What Satan, literally the scripture in Romans where it says, what Satan will try to use for your bad, God will use for your good. And, you know, don't get me wrong, being a single mom isn't easy, but I'd choose Z 10 times over again. I proper give my life to Christ because it was a thing like generation of curses all of them things have to end like my my child could not go through them things demons are not going to run wild in my child's life I'm so sorry Satan's not going to toy with my child I am so sorry so I had to be that prayerful mother so to protect my kid do you know what I mean to protect my baby and that's what I've done I really give my life back to Christ so with all that being said guys i'm here to let you know yes i am a christian yes i do believe the lord is my um yes i do believe jesus is my lord and savior i read my bible you know i do my journaling i fast when i'm led to fast you know i'm a member of a church i serve in the church yes i do do all those things but i do not bleed the bible I do not, I didn't walk down the road of Nazareth with Jesus himself. Do you know what I mean? Like I am very much human and I'm living in a society that is hard. Like it is hard sometimes to, you know, walk on the narrow path. Like the road to, the road to heaven is narrow. The road to heaven is tiny, so tiny, you know? And it is very hard. I do put God first in all that I do, but the last thing I need is you guys looking at my social medias or looking on my YouTube and just looking for a fault. Like, the only person that can judge me is God. Do you understand? But I'm here to tell you, like, I'm not perfect. You know, I have a whole daughter outside marriage. I swear sometimes. Well, I use the God has really brought me a long way. But my mouth used to be filthy. Sometimes when I'm ready, I have to tell God, you know, take this situation. You know, I am not completely like i'm not the i am not complete yet in my journey with christ but the beauty is if i was complete i wouldn't need christ do you know what i mean so i just want to encourage some of you like it's a journey we're all on this journey and don't look at me like i'm jesus i'm not jesus i'm his daughter do you know what I mean? I'm actually his daughter. So I'm going to get it wrong a few times. I'm going to make a few mistakes. Do you know what I mean? I, like, I'm not perfect, but I'm here, guys. Like, I'm trying. Do you know what I mean? Like, and God sees my heart. And that's why, you know, me and God, we're article. And so we're on a journey with the good Lord. And yeah, we're moving, baby. We out here, baby. You know, God's doing a work 
in me and you know if you give him your heart he can do a work in you too like he can literally change the hardest of hearts he can change the hardest of hearts and god willing if you're watching this he changes yours because who doesn't want to go to heaven who doesn't want to sit again sit with the almighty king who doesn't want to do that i want to i know that for sure but yeah guys thanks for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe i'll see you in my next video Mwah. I love you so much. Bye.